So our third speaker is from the University of Cambridge, Dr. Muzaffar Kazar uh, from the uh, Department of Psychiatry, and he's going to talk about a computational approach to reinforcement learning in patients with remitted depression. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks to the Academy for the opportunity. So I'm Muzaffar Kazar. I'm uh, a clinical lecturer at the Department of Psychiatry, University of Cambridge. Today I'm going to talk about an important but overlooked area in depression which is the reinforcement learning, a specific cognitive function. And in this study, we try to understand a feasibility of a pharmacological agent, modafinil, and we, we use computational approach to analyze the underlying behavioral patterns in the reinforcement learning task. I'd like to start with the cognitive problems in depression. So when we talk about depression, people might think low mood, sleep disturbances, appetite problems. But one of the most persistent problems in depression are cognitive problems, like memory difficulties, concentration problems, and decision-making problems. And in, in some of the studies with the follow-up, the co cognitive problems are the most persistent uh, problems in depression. One of the important elements is that cognitive problems do not respond to antidepressant treatment, so there's a clear unmet clinical need. Modafinil is originally licensed for narcolepsy, and it has established beneficial effects on cognitive functions in different neuropsychiatric conditions. Modafinil essentially modulates dopamine and norepinephrine in critical brain circuits that are implicated in cognitive functions, and especially in reinforcement learning and decision making. On a day-to-day -day basis, we, we, we are involved in decisions, and our brains make a model of the world and constantly updates this model by using the information from the environment. And essentially, the brain uses the rewards and losses uh, to update the information. And healthy people usually go through the uh, reward ma maximization and minimizing the loss. But in depression, this might not be the case. And the very simple decisions might be very difficult. So, as I mentioned, the optimal decision making is crucial to maintain daily activities. But in depression, there are studies that showed the reward-based learning is impaired. There is, uh, there is somewhat blunted reward response in depression, and there is problems in avoiding the loss. And more interestingly, this, these difficulties can persist even after the mood symptoms recover, which make the life even more harder for people. Uh, it brings the distress, uh, and this could lead to vulnerability to relapse. In my clinical practice, I often hear from the patients saying even the simple decisions, like going out for a coffee, could be a catastrophic um, process for them, because there are too many, too many options and they, they, they're not in the position to prioritize the rewards and the potential losses. So when I think about the, the losses and the responses to losses, I remembered Eeyore. Eeyore meets Winnie the Pooh, and uh, Winnie the Pooh realized that Eeyore's tail is missing. And he says, you must have left it somewhere, said Winnie the Pooh, and Eeyore says, Somebody must take, have taken it. And after a long silence, he says, how like them. So that's the, that's the type of indifference to losses and not making the move after losses we are trying to model and tap into in clinical depression. So in this study, we used a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled design with parallel groups. So there were 59 patients with limited depression we specifically selected people with limited depression because we were interested in the persistent cognitive problems. And they received either single dose of modafinil or placebo. And they completed a set of cognitive tasks in the clinical research facility in Cambridge uh, on memory, attention, and also they completed the reinforcement learning task, which I'm going to talk to you more in detail. And the groups were well matched in terms of their demographic characteristics and also their clinical characteristics. So 
essentially the participants were seeing something like this uh, when they are doing the reinforcement learning task. So they presented with two circles in the screen, on the screen uh, with different colors. And each time they have to, they, they're asked to, to make a decision and find the better circle. And then the next time they're presented with different colors. And again, they're asked to find the better one. So when they make the selection, they see something like you win 50p, or you didn't win anything, or you lose 50p. So basically, over time, over repeated attempts, they learn by trial and error. And in the, the task is designed in a way to accommodate different scenarios. There is a no-lose no -lose condition block where they either win 50p or they don't win. And there's a no-win condition where they either lose or don't lose. And it's not a 50-50 uh, deal. The probabilities are set to 70 to 30. So there is the contingency that the participants will need to learn from. And the advantage of computational modeling in this task is we can identify the latent variables in this learning process. So normally, you would end up uh, getting the outcome measure of the monetary gains. But with the computational modeling, you can add different elements to it. So how people are learning and how people are responding to losses or gains. So this gives the, the extra advantage. In the computational modeling we used in collaboration with UCL, uh, we reeled uh, two behavioral parameters. The first one is the learning rate. It is the size of adjustments that are made to adapt to new information. So essentially how you learn uh, the task. And the second one is exploration after loss or gain. So it's al also called choice stochasticity or temperature in the literature. And this is a measure of exploration in response to decisions. It is what you do, what action you take after you face a loss or a gain. And the results show that participants receiving modafinil were uh, more active in, in terms of their exploration after losses uh, compared to patients receiving placebo. So the patients receiving placebo were somewhat blunted in their response to losses while uh, patients receiving modafinil were more exploratory. And also, this difference in exploration after losses was correlated with monetary gains and attention performance in the modafinil group, but not in the placebo group. So to conclude, we showed that modafinil worked towards an increased exploration, in other words, searching for less punishing or better opportunities. And we use the computational modeling to reveal the latent variables in this task. And the, the study showed feasibility of modafinil use to address decision-making problems in, in depression. And the main implication of uh, this uh, feasibility study is that the improved decision-making cognition can lead to better outcomes in patients with depression. I would like to thank my collaborators, especially Dr. Wilson Walton from UCL, who we worked uh, through the computational modeling, and all the collaborators who made this study possible. Thank you very much. Okay, questions? Yes, Chris. Are there any comparable data in people without depression? Yes, the modafinil uh, was shown to, 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 uh, to have beneficial effects on reinforcement learning uh, task, yeah. And how did the baseline compare? How do people without depression score on your scores without modafinil compared with the people with depression treated, etc.? Mm -hmm. So can you please read that? Well, you've shown a difference mm -hmm. with modafinil. Yeah with an improvement of people with depression from a low baseline to a higher level. Mm -hmm. How does that improved condition compare with normal people who have never had depression? Not that I'm saying that depressed mm -hmm. people are not normal, they're a spectrum mm -hmm. I recognize. Okay, okay. so um, obviously when we talk about depression, there is already a blunted effect. So, so you suggest that the, the blunted effect may, may, might, might mean that modafinil can give 
uh, a better edge to patients who already have reinforcement learning difficulties. Yeah? So uh, I cannot comment on the exact parameters because, because there are different computational modeling uh, parameters that are used. Uh, but uh, the, the studies using reinforcement learning tasks show that modafinil can improve the, the performance, not, it, not, uh, not, the, not using the exact model that we used. So um, what, what are the next steps? I mean, should we be just using modafinil? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the next step would be to, to see whether this effect can be sustained in a longer term, term study. Uh, and also another angle could be using this uh, task with the computational modeling to repurpose different drugs that can, that can address decision-making abilities in uh, people with depression. Sorry, one more. Where did the 59 come from? So there were, there were uh, 30, 30 patients in each group, but one, uh, for one patient, the data was lost. That's why they ended up in 29 versus 30. How was it powered in the first place? So. Yeah, so we did, we did the power, power analysis uh, by using the, the previous studies using similar cognitive tasks, and, and the power analysis yielded uh, a sample size of 30 uh, in each group. I just wondered, out of curiosity really, I wondered how one explains such a large placebo response and whether that is comparable to other clinical trials in depression. Is that a standardized level of placebo response in depression? Mm, placebo response traditionally. Yeah, so, yeah, in, yeah. yeah. Placebo response traditionally has been quite high in, in depression. And this is one of the main criticisms of clinical trials in depression. So that is uh, quite expected uh, in patients with depression. Any other questions? The, the model, model you have for the sort of decision making, obviously it was a human model. Are, are there sort of similar models that you can use in animal studies to try and understand a bit more about the kind of Not that I know chemistry? of, not no. that I know of, but I would presume there, there might be some um, uh, pri primate models, yeah. not the rodent models. And, and do, you, do you understand or is it understood the sort of biochemical effects in the brain that the drug is having? So modafinil affects uh, several uh, neurochemical systems, but mainly dopamine and norepinephrine. Okay. So from both cl preclinical uh, studies and clinical studies with using imaging techniques and, and PET uh, in terms of the target engagement, we can, we can see that, that modafinil increases the do dopamine availability in this critical brain circuit. So that's one of the things. Yeah. But, but also there are other effects on other um, neurotransmitter systems, such as glutamate. Okay. Great, good. Any more questions? No, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.